Hi guys, this is the Audio Fool and for today, we're going to review the Tritrix MTM DIY speakers from Parts Express. What I like the most about the Tritrix M2M is that it's a DIY project and it's really fun to build. And the sound, it should be secondary but it actually sounds quite spectacular. Besting speakers well beyond its price point. It's neutral sounding but with just enough glitter and heft to make it quite engaging for me. And you have that big deep sound stage with excellent imaging and instrument separation. What I don't like about the Tritrix M2M is that your build is only as good as your skills and most likely if you don't have the skills you probably don't have the right tools as well. I didn't do too bad I think but I also think I could have done better if I bought more tools. And it's a $230 kit but you need to prepare to spend a bit more because it does include the wires, the screws, the binding posts, and the finish. And the base is a little bit lacking in my build but the spec says it could go down to 45 hertz. My build does not so again your skills affect your build and you might have done something stupid like me. And finally, there's no resale value and I don't think anyone will get this off my hands, but it's still a fun project and it's ultimately the sound satisfies, so I've been audio fooled. Who knew DIY could sound better? If you want to know more about the comparison, please keep on watching. The Tritrix MTM designed by Kurt Campbell sold by Parts Express is a great sounding speaker. The kit with knockdown cabinets have most of the things you need, but there are still some extra expenses you need to add to the $230 SRP. You still need to get wires, screws, and binding posts, and of course the finishing as well. In this case, I got cherry veneer and a clear coat. Not a bad job if I say so, though I'd probably just stick with a paint job next time or maybe just have it done professionally. It's a 5 and one fourth paper cone sandwich with a 1 and 1 18th silk dome filling which my daughter loves poking. Sensitivities average around 88 dB and 8 ohm impedance. Baffle is slightly curved up front making it much more difficult to veneer but pretty much boxy all the way to the back where it just drilled holes for the binding posts. This should go down to 45 hertz, but it doesn't on my build because I didn't use a port extender, so that's on me. But again, not bad looking, but I hope my future kits would be better detailed. First, we compare to the Kef LS50s using the Shit Asia and Yggdrasil. In my test tracks, the costlier Kef LS50s take 4 out of 5, but it was a very close match and I wouldn't be sad if I was left with the Tritrix. It's able to spread the instruments apart more, which makes it better in jazz and orchestra where there's not a lot of vocals or bass. Bass has more volume and goes lower in the LS50s, though the M2M will be tighter and more accurate. The LS50 has a richer sound, but just about the same amount of detail. Vocals are more forward in the Kef LS50s as well, and sounds more solid too, though the M2M would have a more relaxed and airier voice. The LS50s has a brighter, more piercing treble, and also has more resolution if you can handle it. The M2M gets back with a wider, taller, deeper soundstage and separates the instruments with ease, besting the compressed feel of the LS50s. They're about as silent, though the LS50s has more port shuffling in my test tracks. The Tritrix M2M is neutral sounding with just enough sparkle and oomph to make it enjoyable for me. It's a bit larger than the Kef LS50s though, and depending on your skills, well, it probably still won't look as good as the Kef LS50s, but it should sound almost as good. Plus that satisfaction of doing it by yourself, I bet it will actually sound better than the Kef LS50s, at least in your own ears. You do need to devote some time and effort though, but that's a big part of the fun. Next, we compare to the ELAC reference DBR62 using the Rega Illicit R and Yggdrasil. I like the ELACs better with bass intensive tracks like Trials and Ocean Wide, but the Tritrix proves to be the more thorough speaker besting the ELACs in the other three tracks. As long as you don't put a lot of emphasis on bass, the Tritrix gets my votes for all of the genres apart from electronica. Bass is simply much more gratifying in the ELACs, digging down a whole lot deeper and louder. 
Again, it could be my build as I didn't use the extension port, which is supposed to increase bass volume in the lower frequencies. The mid-range is also thicker than the BR62s, but the Tritrix is more adept and more agile and is able to have more details as a result. Vocals are also a bit more forward and breathier. The Dayton Audio Tweeter isn't an expensive tweeter, but with the design as a whole, it feels more extended and clearer. Despite the heavier bass of the Elax, the Tritrix gives a deeper soundstage and you're able to tell which instruments goes back further than the other. There's more space between instruments as well and it's much more quieter, but it might be because I padded the inner sides of the speakers with soundproofing mat. I like the Elax a lot. In fact, they're my $1,000 speaker reference, but these $230 Tritrix M2Ms, let's say $300 Tritrix M2Ms, seem to be in a higher level. If these were mass-produced by a well-known brand, they'd probably cost something like $1,000 in my book. So it makes me think, how much are the actual cost of those speakers anyway? Maybe $100, then $500 for marketing? Well, they're still a bit neutral sounding for this price class, but I'm using them for my dining area, so that should say something. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just write them down below. See you in the next video.